YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Coral Blade Grotto broadcast. This is going to be another one of those reaction videos. And as you can see, I'm going to be looking at this website for the claim of the life. And I'm going to be looking at specifically this part of the website, the frequently the colon space F hyphen A hyphen Q hyphen public. Which, I mean, if you're going to use correct sentence structure, what the hell does that even mean? If it means frequently asked, you have frequently, which has the L-Y at the end of it, asked, which has the E-D at the end of it. I mean, and the colon here at the beginning, which is in the wrong position, it should be tied up against the F. That's just to start with. So you know what you're in for when you go into this website. And you can see who has authorized it here. So I'm going to go up to the top here and look at some different things. I'm not going to look at everything, but I am going to show that this is incorrect, the colon space. And up here, all of them are, are the same. They start with of the, which is what the colon space is. And correct sentence structure has to start with a cause. A for the and the colon space does not represent for the the colon space would either represent of the or with the so renewing driver's license and of the passport query for the what if of the required identification is with the expiring or expired doesn't even end on an authority the mathematical interface on this sentence is void, just like most of the sentences you see here. Continue with the steps, but <laughs> what of the solution with the continue with the steps, but how is but? I mean, I guess it's supposed to be positioned by this colon way back here, but it's still of the. Of the but, what is the correct sentence structure finite mean for the fact but, unless you mean ass. And then you have a for the, which the for the needs to come at the beginning in order for the mathematical interface to maintain its integrity. But as you see, it is not. And then we have the verb over here after all this tomfoolery. We have the particle of negation contra in contract by the administration. Send email with the renewal form. Best to email in the receipt of your renewal as a placeholder, but the chief will need to see a copy of it prior to autographing. 
You may proceed with all steps, but we will just keep your claim on file until this is received via email or minimum 49 days have passed since renewal. There's no expiration on your account, so holds will not affect the final process. So you have to send fiction credentials to this chief guy? Okay. Oh, this ought to be a good one. Response time for my emails. When writing emails of the purchase, it's with the quantum grammar writ or the correct punctuation of the correct punctuation by each claimant scrutiny. That is a void correct sentence because of the incorrect sequencing of positionals. Always write your quantum grammar name in the email and with the email from the account you purchased. Our quantum team of now space are with the cognizant cognizant of the claimant's queries with the large volume of the vast majority claimants seek answers now. Answers, particle negation. And it ends on a concern rather than an authority. So it's void of the mathematical interface. One to seven days answer back period by their grace. That's hilarious. I know some people that go months without getting answers from these people. Need, claim of the life, mentor, hire a tutor on your next step suit. Oh, wow. So not only do they charge 200 and whatever it is or 100 and whatever it is dollars for a claim of the live life, you also hire a tutor? Ladies and gentlemen, I donate my now space to help people with their claim of the live life. Because <laughs> I think everyone ought to be able to create their own claim of the live life under the rules of autonomy. You don't need anyone's permission to create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the live life as long as you have closure on the grammar. I mean, if you don't have closure on the grammar and, and you like kissing ass, I mean, this would be the way to go for sure. But that's up to you. $1 stamp and whole number stamps for the postmasters, the quantum grammar venue are with the requirement of the use. Use. Particle negation. Or whole number postage stamps for purses. Only. Look, they create their own little spelling of only because. I think, and this is my opinion, I think they're too lazy to do the work to parse words and get rid of that L-Y suffix. So they modify the word to something else. And there's a particle of negation at the beginning of it anyways. So complete goofiness. Authorized teachers. Why would they even want to use that? Like the D. That's crazy. So we have authorized teachers here. I'm familiar. I'll show you which ones I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with this guy. This guy has sent me a couple emails, which I can actually go through the emails and show you that his sentences do not mean the same thing forwards as they do backwards. It's the same. Well, obviously, because he learned from these from maybe Russell or, or whatever, so it's not going to be correct. I don't know that individual, this individual. I did a whole video on them. I did a video on that person. Um, I'm familiar with this person. This person used to contact me and ask me grammar questions and then, of course, go back, you know, on a, pretending to be friendly, would ask me a grammar question, and then he would go back and share his knowledge with the Red Thumb Club. Of course, never giving me credit or anything. But at one time, he was doing that a couple times, especially having to do with the uh, conjunction. Because they used to be, say, you need to have a, a colon after the conjunction. But as you can see now, if you look at these pages, sometimes they use the colon, sometimes they don't. Because I showed him that conjunctions as per the grammar mechanics, incorrect sentence structure serve as a bridge between sevens or five, six, sevens. And I proved it. 
what they're saying on the claim of the live life is they include this all caps name. Now that all caps name, by my perception, was created by the fiction on the birth certificate or via the birth certificate. And I had nothing to do with it. So this tells me more that they do participate with the fiction in this sense on their live life claim. They've tied it into the fiction. For me, a live life claim is just a mooring line to help stop a trespass of the fiction. But I don't include in all caps anything with regarding a name on the fiction uh, from the f fiction birth certificate simply because I'm not going to participate with the fiction or give them any jurisdiction. And I'm not going to try and take jurisdiction over a name that they created. I'm only taking jurisdiction over my name that I created, my punctuated name. That's the only thing I'm taking jurisdiction over. Teachers and fake websites. Here we go. For the caution of the piracy. That's pretty funny because they ought to include... Going by their grammar here, they ought to include their own website in here. Because it's not correct sentence structure. So we have Purple Thumb Community. Notice how Purple Thumb Community uses their signatures on their documents. Signature, nom de guerre, dead man's name. Well, what about... The signature that Russell uses on his Postmaster General claim. He doesn't print it. He writes it in cursive. I did a whole video on it. So that's kind of the pot calling the kettle black, wouldn't you say? Purple Thumb community leaders are fraud. Well, whether they're fraud or not, I'm not one to say. But what I will say is that in an interview between Lady Crown and Russell J. Gould, when Russell claimed that he controlled the IMF, Lady Crown challenged him on it and said, well, if you control the IMF, then what about all the money from our, uh, our native trust for our native peoples here in New Zealand and Australia? What, you need to release those funds. Why do you still have them then if you're you know, IMF? If you control it, you can give us back our money. And when she called him to the carpet to perform on his claim of having control of the IMF, he completely broke contract, uh, contact with her and began slandering the Purple Thumb community, as you see here. And she also asked him what was with all the mistakes on the Live Life claims that they had bought from Uriel Meta Biggs. I think she said that her and her husband bought two Live Life claims for like three or 400 bucks. And there were mistakes all over it. And she asked him about it. And he said, oh, uh, that's Muriel or something. Like he like threw Muriel under the bus. And then they tried to contact Muriel. And then after that, the contact was broken. And then you see what happened here. Which is part for the course for these people. Once they get called out on their, on their bullshit, uh, they slander you and put you on this list. Mark Sean Christopher, now, if you look back in time, you see the Reno seminars where you see Russell talking about Mark Sean, acting like he doesn't know who the guy is, even fumbling his name when Mark was a student of Russell's. He had known Russell for years. He actually went to visit Russell at his house, I'm pretty sure. He went to a seminar did interviews with him on YouTube, did YouTube videos, and yet Russell acts like in the Reno seminars like he doesn't know who Mark is. And then he says, the guy from England seems like a good guy. But that, that flipped pretty quick there. And then also you see that, uh, well, they wrote the name correct here, except for the, the colon space thing. And then also they don't position their numbers as facts, because I guess we're supposed to assume that they're facts. But correct sentence structure is void of assumption, so they're, even the numbers have to be positioned correctly. Uh, but Mark had a lowercase k in his name. So all of a sudden, after David passed away and Russell began his uh, little soap opera with Mark Sean Christopher, he began calling people out who had lowercase uh, letters in their middle name at the beginning of their middle name. 
But it was okay, you know, from 2014 when Marx signed the Quantum Media Treaty, when he, he autographed that with a lowercase k, sorry, I mean autograph. Russell was okay with it up until he wasn't, which was years later. Uh, I don't know about all that. This individual, oh, wow, look at that. A semicolon? What in the heck is that? I'm familiar with this individual. Um, they're, as far as I know from what I've seen of their writing, it's very similar to Russell's, the way he teaches, and it's you. It's not mathematically certified forwards and backwards. And there I am. Who is that? Oh, wow. Keeper of the Keen Bean? What in the heck? And they put my name in all caps. Hmm. I do have uh, familiarity with this individual right here. I did. I think I did a consultation with him many years ago. And number one, I you know, that's a vetting process for me. He just rubbed me the wrong way. Didn't like what he was doing or talking about the way he conducted himself. And so I didn't really have much to do with him. And then I began getting reports of people telling me he was selling live life claims overseas for like 300 bucks a pop. And I definitely disagree with that. Uh, but if these people genuinely really think this, then I'd have to say that their, wow, their level of ignorance is no wonder they don't have closure on the grammar if they really think this. Like, if that's the way their logic base works, then I'm astounded at this, at the stupidity behind this, how they come to that conclusion. That's the first thing. The second thing, either they're doing it out of nascience and they don't know any better, or they're doing it on purpose, and that's malicious. I feel like it's the second thing because that's my feeling of this whole website and the man who, who is the authority behind it. They're underhanded. They're liars. They're with the void performance on just about every single thing. They're power hungry. And again, these are you know my perceptions from my own personal interactions with them. And this is just one more little piece of evidence for that. Uh, actually, I have over 5,000 subscribers now. Thank you, subscribers. I appreciate it. Violation of the false claims. What in the hell is this? Okay, first of all, it's the old chestnut of the colon with a space, which is not correct and voids the correct sequencing of positionals. But let's look at the meat of the matter. Violation of the false claims. What the hell does that mean when you violate a false claim? So someone makes a false claim, and then they violate that false claim? What in the... These individuals have a stunning lack of knowledge about correct sentence structure, but also they have a staggering voidance of knowledge of plain English and how to convey simple sentences violation of the false claims okay what false claims and how have the false claims been violated is with the claiming open source salvage of his own terms huh particles of negation all over this with the quantum grammar words of the void credit so it sounds like to me that Russell's whining because I didn't give him credit for work that I did. So Russell's crying about me not giving him credit for the correct sentence structure facts that I salvaged as open source. So he's telling me that the words that I put the work in and did research on, and I salvaged them, and I let them 
out to the public to use as open source, he's saying that that's wrong, that I should give him credit for the work that I did, that it's not open source. The work that I did is not open source, that somehow he has needs a piece of that pie. The audacity and sense of entitlement of some people is unreal. Selling domicile claims in CPAS, that is not true. That is not correct. I have never sold a domicile claim. I don't sell CPASs. I don't do any of that. The only thing that has anything to do with monetization is my YouTube channel. The channel that you're on. Whereas people can choose to be members on my YouTube channel. That's it. That's the only monetization that happens. I never claim to sell C passes. I never claim to sell domicile claims. And then they said evidence is with the mock C pass with the void mentioning of RJG. What in the hell does Russell J. Gould have to do with my C pass? I created it. I use it with my authority. I've been using it for five years, going in and out of government vessels, going in and out of military vessels going out into the public with it, with no problems whatsoever. Sounds like someone's just throwing a hissy fit, actually. So we have criminal websites, you are law. Richard Mojan, now I know of this individual. This individual, uh, from my knowledge, was someone who was actually friends with David and Russell back in the day and it's sad that uh to me it's sad you know i mean but i mean when you get a guy like russell who literally physically assaults his mentor and beats the crap out of him allegedly and then totally slanders him uh totally tries to discredit him after the fact after the guy dies if if Russell is the type of individual to do that to a dead man. Then as someone who supposedly was his mentor, like a father figure, a friend. I mean, who knows what he'll do to someone else. So that's par for the course right there. Makes sense. This individual right here, Samantha Allen Lambert, when I first began teaching correct sentence structure, I don't know. I don't know if she's involved with him anymore, but she used to be, uh, connected with Marcus Sean Christopher. And I remember having a couple conversations with her, and I remember being struck by the fact that she had a very good grasp of syntax, which was amazing because Mark doesn't know how to syntax. So, but I don't know too much about her. Oh, this guy right here goes around claiming the same things that Russell claims. And his grammar is actually only a little bit better than Russell's. But his syntax, the way he syntaxes things is completely, uh, I don't I don't get how he syntaxes things. I think he uses some kind of fiction program, which any type of interface or AI cannot really determine whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. The only way it could do that possibly is by repetition by remembering what has been labeled as tangible or non-tangible and as yet that hasn't been created so i'd have to say that this guy's syntaxing method is not correct at least by my comprehension of what syntaxing is based on tangibility non-tangibility of words i mean he may have a new method that makes sense to him but it just doesn't make sense to me so i don't know I can't really say about that. To me, it's incorrect within line of with the uh, quantum grammar mechanics that I know. Uh, he does use particles of negation in his facts, though, as far as I know. Okay, Leon Edwards, uh, he's the guy that was selling the book from Portugal. Um, and again, Anybody who disagrees or does not kiss Russell's ass ends up on this list. Oh, Ramola D reports. This is crazy that, that he would put her on here. Because I don't, from 
my recollection, she doesn't know anything about correct sentence structure. She, she seems like a very nice person, and yet he puts her on here just because he, she interviewed Lady Crown. It seems so middle schoolish. If not middle schoolish, it's almost like uh, elementary schoolish, the attitude of these people. And then, of course, Ricardo, who uh, is one of my best students, partner in the crime. That's hilarious. With the Matthew hyphen Jason. Yeah, like I said, these people don't even, I mean, let alone their lack of a grasp of knowledge of correct sentence structure, an extreme lack of knowledge in just conveying plain, simple English. Maybe instead of the second grade reading level that David's always talking about, this possibly is a first grade reading level, maybe even kindergarten or preschool, pre-K, right? Vincent Glendo, don't know who that is. No idea. I think I've seen all I need to say about this. Spell checking my punctuation. This is hilarious. No one spell checks the uh, live life claim, though, do they? <laughs> no refunds, of course. No refunds. Witnesses claim of the live life. Do I need a witness on my claim of the life? You are the witness on your witnessing claim. This is insane to me because the way that I was taught live life claim by David Wynn Miller, you need three witnesses. Three is authority. One is opinion. Two is certification. Three is authority. Three or more. When these people sell live life claims, they don't even do a video witnessing. Because if you're going to be a witness, you have to see someone. You have to witness them, hear them, see them, so on and so forth. A video uh, communication will do or meet them in person. These people don't even do that. So the witnessing is not correct. There's no continuance of the evidence. Uh, Russell J. Gould maybe autographs their live life claims without ever having witnessed them. So he doesn't know what he's signing. He doesn't know if that's a real person or not, a real man or woman. They're saying... They're saying that it just takes one individual witness, and that's you. Wow. This stuff is really insanity to me. Accepting funds via PayPal may change at some point, but for now we have set it up. We do not currently accept gold or silver. Well, at one point, a couple years ago, they were accepting gold and silver. And then Russell was claiming that he was able to create gold and silver. Or actually, he said he could create gold, and he had no need for money. But then shortly thereafter, he created a Patreon, and they began doing this PayPal thing. So maybe they're not quite the sovereigns they claim to be. Well, thanks for joining me for this reaction video. It's quite interesting to see how many grammatical errors are on the page and the cognitive dissonance and just lack of knowledge and certification of what they're claiming, whether it's in the... Well, there are no facts. There are no facts on that website. None. No facts. And I'll, I'll stand behind that. There are no facts on that website with regards to correct sentence structure technology. And there's no certification of claims. Like them thinking that I'm someone else, another name. What evidence could they possibly have of that? What evidence, what hard evidence have they shown? None, nothing. It's hilarious. But I mean, I'm not going to 
I mean, it's not damaging me in any which way, shape, or form because I don't sell live life claims. I'm not trying to sell a grammar and on top of it have the grammar be incorrect like these people. The only thing that they hinge on is what comes out of Russell's mouth. That's it. That's the only thing. It's a whole fiction babble thing. They've modified the live life claim from having three live life claim witnesses, witnesses in the classical sense of witnessing someone, to you just need yourself. And you just need to send us your fiction driver's license or your fiction passport. And then we'll make your claim in the live life for you. What does that sound like to you? Fiction in, fiction out. I've been saying this for a very long time, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully the people that need to hear this will hear it. And the people, the trolls, who ignore this stuff, well, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I've never heard Russell say that, but uh, that's that's definitely a phrase that would, would sound right coming out of his mouth. So Russell, if you're out there and you heard me say that, go ahead and use that if you want to. You can use it alongside your, your win or lose by how you choose stuff. First in line, first in time. <laughs> All right, if you want to learn correct sentence structure, you're welcome to study the over 400 free videos on this YouTube channel. Or you can join the membership and get access to its exclusive content if you join the Tier 2 Loyalists and Contributors. Or you can contact me at the email address listed below here and apply for a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar workshop. See you next time. Salute.